champion, and I've been joined at ringside by my colleague Gil Clancy. And Gil, uh, the one thing uh, for sure about Bert Cooper, I'm watching him train the other day in the gym, is he even looks a little bit like Joe Frazier. He fights a lot like Joe Frazier. Now the question is, can he be a Joe Frazier? Tim, he looks like Joe Frazier. He fights like Joe Frazier because he's trained by Joe Frazier. He's the kind of he the heavyweight I like. He's the kind of a guy that can get you out with one shot. There's not too many of them around today. Well, he's certainly a dangerous contender, and the hurdle that he must... Uh, to someone who likes fighting. Sometimes that's just a matter of... Uh where the camera is, you know, it's all done by camera angle. Maybe your audience would be interested in seeing uh, uh, how we do that. I'm what sure they, I'm sure they would now, Frank. Will you play straight for me? I will. If I show you? I'll all right. Uh, can we, let's get up. Right. I'll show you what I mean. Now, the pictures, the camera's over there. Now, you're here, and I have to win this, all right? I'll show you what it looks like. Ready? Not only did I have the opportunity to compete in the Olympics, but in my own hometown in front of my family, friends, and people I was raised up with, and then on top of that, my country. The Olympics were over now, and it was time for Tillman to set new goals. Professional boxing would be his career, and trainer Mercer Smith helped him map a plan. Tillman would try first for a cruiserweight crown, then if successful, he'd move up to the heavyweights. Tillman has taken the cruiserweight class by storm. The speed and quickness that had struck gold at the Olympics were tremendous assets as the hungry Californian racked up wins in his first nine professional fights. Six of those fighters went down for the count, and four of them never answered the bell for round two. Tillman's reputation was growing, and a shot at his first professional title was next. That opportunity came just seven weeks ago in Las Vegas. Tillman challenging the NABF cruiserweight champion Bash Ali, flooring him twice before the referee stopped the action just 85 seconds into the fight. The Tillman train is on track. Uh, he's way ahead of schedule, and I, I, the thing I don't want to do is, is rush him, you know, too much. But uh, uh, I thought that uh, Bash Ali would be even more of a challenge to him, which it wasn't. So, uh, I think we're on target. Sensational Mike Tyson seems to have a head start toward that coveted crown, but bear in mind that Tillman is the only man who have ever beaten Tyson. He did it as an amateur twice. But first things first, and today Tillman hopes to defend his NABF belt and advance toward a shot at a world cruiserweight title. In each of his uh, professional bouts, I think you had a little trouble hearing me uh, there, folks. What I was saying, the progress of Henry Tillman through his first 10 pro bouts. You have to be impressed with that, Gil. No question about it, Tim. He's a much better fighter now than a fighter that won the Olympic gold medal. But I'm going to tell you, he has good hand speed, good foot speed, good lateral movement, and he's going to need every bit of it today. Well, sounds like an exciting matchup. Henry Tillman defending against Burt Cooper. It is coming up live from Atlantic City on CBS Sports Sunday after this message and a word from your local station. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and happy Father's Day and welcome to the Trump Casino Hotel on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board and the North American Boxing Federation. And now let's get ready to rumble. This is the main event of the afternoon scheduled for 12 rounds for the NABF Cruiserweight Championship. The referee for this bout is Steve Smoger. Introducing first in the blue corner. He's wearing the black trunks with white letters and weighs an even 194 pounds. He has a professional record of 11 and 1, 10 KOs from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The challenger, Smoking Bird in the red corner wearing the silver gray trunks and weighing 194 and one quarter pounds undefeated as a professional 10 straight victories seven KOs he's the winner of a gold medal in the 84 Olympics he's the current NABF cruiserweight champion from Los Angeles California Henry Well, Henry Tillman at 10 and 0 with seven knockouts, and 20-year-old uh, Burt Cooper 11 and 1 with 10 KOs. Interestingly, Gil, both these fighters uh, 
started late in terms of a boxing career. Uh, Bert Cooper had only 10 amateur fights, and he has been sparkling as a professional, losing only once to Reggie Gross, and that was when he got hit directly in the eye in the eighth round, a fight that he was way ahead on the scorecards but couldn't continue, and that his only loss. Tillman, everybody knows his story. He started at age 20, is now 25 years old, and uh, going on to win the Olympic gold medal, which was an unbelievable triumph for his lack of experience as an amateur. Tim, another great heavyweight that started late in life was Rocky Marciano. Tillman in the gray trunks and Cooper in black, and we expect the quick start by Cooper, and there he comes out with that Joe Frazier-style left hook. Referee Steve Smoker from New Jersey, judging by three judges at ringside. They are Tom Kazmarek and Richard Murray from New Jersey and Paul Smith from Las Vegas. Tim, if you really want to use your imagination, you can imagine that you're watching Muhammad Ali against Smoke and Joe Frazier. That's right, Gil. Certainly stylistically, uh, that, that is a very similar matchup. And who knows, maybe uh, both of these young men will achieve that eminence. It's very early in their careers to predict. Cooper really is smoking, I'll tell you that. He's been sparring with Rodney Frazier and Marvis Frazier, preparing for this fight. Marvis Joe's son and Rodney his nephew. Cooper does take chances, Tim. He comes in, he's, a lot of times he left, leaves himself wide open. Tillman is a sharp puncher. He's not the puncher that uh, Cooper is, but if he can hit, hit Cooper on the chin when he's coming, anything can happen. Well, we saw a first-round knockout by Tillman against Bash Ali. It was a big surprise to everybody. Uh, he was well thought of for an opportunity to win the NABF title from Bash Ali, but uh, I don't think anybody expected a first-round knockout. Tillman is using a short uppercut inside that's very, very effective. Well, if Bert Cooper needed any further incentive, apart from the title here, the North American Cruiserweight Crown, his entire family, I think all but one, are in attendance. He comes from a family of 11 children. Big and right hand and left hook by Cooper. All but one of the Coopers are here as we go under a minute in the first round. Tim, he stunned Henry Tillman with that right hand left hook. Henry knows he's in a fight right now. just finally decided to hang on against that onslaught of Cooper. It didn't really land as he chased him around the ring, but obviously a Tillman a little more cautious here. Doesn't want to give him that free swinging room. Another left landed by Cooper. Henry seems confused. He was looking at the referee. I don't know why he better look at Cooper. Never mind the referee. I think he was looking for the referee to get out of his path. He wanted to circle in that direction. He wants to keep moving against this attack of Cooper's. Comes right at you. Final seconds, round one. Number two, and again, the quick start by Cooper. The Tillman now with Cooper on the ropes, and they're toe to toe. Down goes Tillman, and he's hurt, Tim. He's hurt as Isaac Lassie. Tillman in difficulty here as he was the man throwing the punches, and then suddenly one counter punch sent him flying. Well, I told you that. Bert Cooper is that kind of a punch, and now Mercy Smith told Tillman to go out and jab and box. He said, and relax. He Tillman, said, in difficulty, another right hand. And another sends him down again. <laughs> and he's he's glassy on Tim, and there's a lot of time to go in this round. This three, three knockdowns in a round ends the fight under the NABF rule, so he's been down twice in big difficulty, the unbeaten Olympic champion. Bert Cooper, still trying to pressure him. Still on rubbery legs, Tim. One good shot will do it. Tillman throwing punches back, trying to survive, trying to keep Cooper off him. He Another left hold. landed. He has to hold Tim, and he has to move to his right. Get away from that left hook. He lands a right hand of his own to the ear of Cooper, but he didn't move him. He has to survive this round, Tim, to get back in his fight. 
Hard body shot by Cooper. Cooper with some bomb. Got nailed himself, Tim. Cooper got nailed. left and a right by Tillman, but he can't move Cooper backward. And Cooper's getting a little tired. A left landed by Cooper again. It does look arm weary. If Tillman can survive this round. We could see a big turnaround, but he has to survive this round. Coming to the one minute mark remaining. A long way to go in round number two. Bombs being thrown. Another right landed by Tillman and a left. Tillman a short right by Cooper. Tim, he has to hold. He has to survive the round. Another right landed by Tillman. That one shook Cooper. Maybe he should hold, but he's pretty effective throwing punches at the moment. But Tim, he's in, he's in such a precarious position. One shot and the fight's over. I think he's kind of regained some composure and a little bit underneath him now. I think he can see that Cooper's a little arm weary. Cooper can't get his arms up now. Under 30 seconds to go. What a round. Tillman forcing the issue. A short right to the face of Cooper. And an uppercut. There's that short uppercut inside that was so effective in the first round. A hook by Cooper a little wide. Landed on the back of the head. A straight right hand by Tillman. And another right hand. Final seconds of round two. What a round. Cooper finishes with a left and a right. And Tillman down right. Survives as Joe Frazier lifts up Cooper back to his stool. And there's Henry Tillman down twice in round number two. Somehow got through it and indeed finished stronger than Cooper at the end. Tim, one of the things you have to understand that Cooper is only a 20-year-old kid, and a 20-year-old should not have the stamina of an older, more mature fighter. That could work in Henry Tillman's favor. Here comes the knockdowns now. Let's watch Tillman is winging away against the bomber, something he shouldn't have done. That's exactly right. That's, here's the second knockdown. Of course, he's already still wobbly from that first one, that left hook that came as a counterpunch. And then you see Cooper just chasing him, caught him with a long right, and it looked more like those wobbly legs from the first knockdown for the reason he fell down the second time. Now watch here with under 30 seconds to go in the round, Gilman, who uh, would have appeared to be in desperate straits, battling back and putting pressure on an arm worry Cooper. All right, back live round three. Scheduled for 12. A short right by Cooper and a right back by Tillman. Another left by the champion Tillman. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy live from the Trump Casino Hotel in Atlantic City. And we've got some kind of a battle here at 195 pounds for the North American Cruiserweight title. Then the thing is, Tillman is so much a, a better boxer than, than Cooper. I don't know why. He just doesn't try to score points for a while. Let this kid wind down a little bit. He's standing right in front of him. Well, you pointed out Mercer Smith, his trainer, told him to do just that at the beginning of round two, but he wound up in that slugfest along, along the ropes. Sneaky punch at two, Cooper. That was a sneaky right in. If that landed, he would have caught Tillman coming in. Yes, Tillman just picked it up. Early in round three. 20-year-old Burt Cooper. Tim, 20 on January 10th of this year. Tim, these guys don't win these Olympic gold medals without having any, any heart. Cooper sure, excuse me, Tillman sure showed plenty of heart in that second round. He showed that he was an Olympic champion, coming back the way he did. Cooper continues to wing here in the third round. Tillman from Los Angeles. Cooper from Sharon Hills, Pennsylvania, now living in Philadelphia, where he's trained by Joe Frazier and Val Colbert. In Tillman's first pro fight, he was on the deck, Tim, almost immediately, and he got up and he won. So he, he does have the experience of getting off the floor and winning. In his last outing, a first-round knockout of Bash Ali, a much more experienced fighter, to win this NABF title. In Cooper's last outing, a tenth-round knockout over Oscar Holman. Cooper hurt Tillman again, Tim, with a right hand to the body. Good right hand to the body. Tillman has definitely not been able to dance and move and do what he would like to be doing against this style. And Cooper wobbles him again. Tillman is not using his legs. He's not using his lateral movement. Short punches inside by Cooper now. Under 
to the 32nd mark we go. These two young cruiserweights, both headed for the heavyweight ranks. Short right by Cooper. Almost knocked Tillman's mouthpiece out, Tim. He, he is super strong, Cooper. Can hurt you with any kind of a punch. Final seconds of round number three, scheduled for 12, the championship distance. In Alamance. This Con. is round number four, scheduled for 12. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy bringing you live from Atlantic City the NABF Cruiserweight Championship at 195 pounds. Cooper had a little trouble making the weight. I talked to him earlier in the week. He acknowledged he was a couple of pounds over, but he came in at 194. Tillman at 194 and a quarter. Well, that could also affect Cooper's stamina later in the fight, Tim. Anytime a guy has to take off weight in a hurry, it can affect him. Now, again, again, Mercer Smith told Tillman to use that jab and move. He lands a combination here, and Cooper just stays right there with him. But Tillman pouring it on in the Cooper corner. But that's when Cooper is most dangerous, Tim. Cooper comes out of there like nothing bothered him at all. Well, that's the way the, that's the way they spar in the Philadelphia gyms every day. This is normal for Cooper. Back out in the center of the ring, Tillman now looking to jab and find openings, but still not moving in the way uh, you've described. Should be what he uh, should be up to out there. Joe Frazier told Cooper, he said, hit him with a few light punches, lull him to sleep, he says, and then, then hit him with the big shot. Just tap him a few times, but I don't think Cooper knows how to tap. <laughs> Both boxers showing the strain of this pace. Tillman is fighting Cooper's fight. And Cooper seems to be enjoying himself. He laughs when he gets hit. A happy warrior. to throw as many punches together as he was in the first couple of rounds, however. It looks like he's looking to load up and land the one big one now. Under a minute to go. Round number four. Of course, Henry Tillman has something to do with that. He's a little more aware of Cooper's punching power. He's, he's smothering Cooper's punches a lot now, Tim. Tillman uh, just caught a club with a thumb in the eye, a left eye, and that's bothering him a little bit. A short chopping right, that hurt him. And he's hurt again. Tim. But Tim, you mentioned that thumb. That's worse than getting hit with three punches, getting a thumb. Well, I don't know whether it was a thumb or a glove, but it did land right in the eye, and it bothered him. Well, that's that, the, the one fight that Cooper lost. That's the way he lost it. That's what happened to him, yes, indeed, against Reggie Gross. There's a right hand by Tim and another right hand. But, Tim, they do not have the power of Cooper's punches. No, they do not. A left hook. That one finally hurt him. That backed him up. A right uppercut by Tim and another right. Boy, is Henry... Everything, letting everything hang out, Tim. Final seconds of the fourth round. Finally was able to move Cooper. And another right hand. <laughs> Tim Ryan and Joe Clancy were in the middle of a cruiserweight war here in Atlantic City, round five. Watching Henry Tillman on the left of your screen, the North American champion, and Burt Cooper in the black trunks. Tim, Tim, two knockdowns in round number two. Tillman has survived and came back in round four. And Tim... Bert Cooper did not come out smoking this round. He came out with a lot more respect for Henry Tillman, and he got nailed with a good right hand in. Well, finally, Tillman was able to move Cooper back. He had landed a lot of punches, didn't seem to have any effect, but right near the end of round four, he wobbled Cooper. Tim, he hit him with enough punches. He should have wobbled him. He hit him a lot of clean punches right on the chin. Now they go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and there's a big right hand by Tillman. And another. In their off punches. But they're not that effective. Well, if the result being Cooper still on his feet and punching back. Out comes the mouth. There goes the mouth. Now he's in trouble. Now he's in trouble. Tillman banging away with three shots here, but Cooper won't go down. Tillman pouring it on here in round five. Cooper finally gets a punch back. Not much on it. And Tillman is trying to put every ounce of weight that he has behind every punch, Tim. But he just isn't the big puncher. He has to do it with a lot of punches. Punches and punches. Champion.
and scoring at will here now. He'll probably get arm weary. He had better not get arm weary, Tim. Cooper with a combination back. We are lacking in defense here for sure. And there's Cooper unloading the right hand. And then a bang to the body. And low, Tim. South of the border. What a heavyweight fight, Tim. Unbelievable. I think I've seen more punches landed in these five rounds than I have in my last three heavyweight fights. Cooper just taking those shots, and I, I grant you that they're not the big solid shots like he throws, but nonetheless, he's taking some kind of punishment and just refuses to wilt. He's dead tired now, though, Tim. As I say, he's only a youngster. He just turned 20 years of age. Doesn't figure to have full stamina as yet. And only 10 amateur fights behind him. He did win the Pennsylvania Golden Club. Went to the Nationals where he lost in the second round back in 1984. But relatively inexperienced as an amateur and a pro. Gotta definitely respect him as a prospect, regardless of the outcome of this fight. Final seconds of round number five. Burt Cooper just will not go down. A good rally by Henry Tillman. And Tim, he laughs at Tillman. These days, Johnny Bench's bench is at the... Welcome to the new world, where all the rules have changed. A world of financial expertise to manage cash, build IRAs, finance mortgages, and a world of insurance protection for lives, health, and property. It's the world of the travelers, one of America's strongest diversified insurance and financial experts. Have you looked under the traveler's umbrella lately? Number six, and these two guys showing the effects of the paint. Tillman on the left of your screen in gray trunks. Burt Cooper in the black trunk. You're looking at two weary heavyweights, Tim. They've both taken heavy punishment. It's going to be, I think, a question now of experience. You know, we have referred to them as heavyweights. But Gil, I don't think there's much doubt that Henry Tillman can carry more weight than he has now at 195, the cruiserweight limit. And probably uh, with his height will be comfortable as he grows into his body uh, at probably 215, I would think, eventually, wouldn't you? Absolutely, Tim. Both of these guys are legitimate heavyweight contenders. We said we needed new young blood in the heavyweight division. Here are two of them right now, two exciting fighters. Round number six, scheduled for 12. Bert Cooper reminds me a little bit of, of Hagler in, the, in that obvious uh, enjoyment of the combat that he has out there. He's tougher it gets, more fun he's having in there. Smiling, and uh, even though he must be feeling the effects and it's been showing at his slower hand speed and fewer punches, uh, there he is still grinning. Tim, right now this is a good round for Cooper, even if Tillman manages to win the round because Cooper's able to take a little rest now. Uh, Tillman, Maybe Tillman doing the same. Well, yes, but I think Cooper's a little more tired than Henry Tillman. Tillman was tired at the end of the last round, but Cooper was really tired. And you have to remember, on points, Cooper is pretty much ahead, Tim. He had a big three-point round, in my opinion, in the second round. It's a lot for Henry Tillman to overcome if it did go to a decision. Well, that's a good point. This round the first one in which there hasn't been slam bang action and for the obvious reasons we've been discussing we had five furious rounds two knockdowns by cooper in round number two tillman surviving it had a good round in round number four you know it's a funny thing another thing about cooper that reminds me of joe frazier i used to be around the gyms a lot of times when joe would be training and they, they told him to take it easy on another fighter. He couldn't do it. The other fighter would kill him. He only had one gear, and that was high gear. And I think that's the kind of fighter that, Henry, that the, uh, Bert Cooper is. Although Tillman is leaving him alone this round, letting him get his breath. To the 32nd mark, we go on round number six. Round is up for grabs right now, Tim. It's up for either guy, and it could be an important round. Tillman has probably been the busier of the two over the round, but neither fighter really landed any of the damaging blows we've been watching. There's the first one by Cooper. 
Excuse me. Yes. How much is it going to cost? Shampoo. And stop using head and shoulders. Tegrin's four times tough. It tackles all four major causes of flaking and itching. Get tough with Tegrin. Round number seven. Burt Cooper, the challenger. Henry Tillman, the NABF cruiserweight champion in the gray trucks. Tim Ryan and Gil Clancy watching the action, and it has been action-packed until that last round when finally the pace slowed. Well, Tim, I think they both took a breather the last round. I'm looking for some fireworks again this round. And Cooper was taunting Tillman at the bell at the end of the last round. He, he, he also taunted him with, a, with the only real tough shot of the round, too, a short right hand. Referee Steve Smogert doing a good job in there in this exciting fight. And out of the picture most of the time, letting these guys work. Well, Tim, that's a sign of a good referee when you said, what referee? Where is he? That means he's a good referee. Cooper was really loading up now, Tim. You know, Cooper just had a good, tough 10-round fight with Oscar Holman. He knocked Holman out in the 10th. 10th round. That, that could be a good prep for a fight like this. He went the 10 in a tough, tough fight. That was on April 18th. Tillman's last fight just a few days later on the 22nd of April, his first round knockout of Ali. So he didn't have too much of a workout to everyone's surprise. Domination landed by the champion, but not a lot on it. the occasional chance of coop, 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 coop coming from the partisan bands from the Philadelphia area, and no doubt from his family, uh, about a dozen of his immediate family and other relatives here. Now, here, there's the guy that's supposed to be the slugger. He's out jabbing Tillman this round, scoring points. Under a minute to go, round number seven. but they just don't have that much of an effect. Under the 32nd mark. Good left hook by Tillman. And then Cooper smiles. Cooper has not been able to get close enough to do any damage to Tillman in this round, even though Tillman... Fans, please. Round number eight from Atlantic City, the Cruiserweight Championship. Of North America, Henry Tillman in gray, Burt Cooper in black. Mercer Smith just hit Henry Tillman with two two left hand slaps. Him, they would have staggered you if he hit you. <laughs> I'll tell you that. And he and he told Henry that he has to back Cooper up, which is really good advice. If you can back up a guy like Cooper, you can win a fight. It's not an easy thing to do, but Cooper can only fight one way, and that's going forward. Jabbing more effectively in the early portion of this eighth round, the champion Tillman. Right hand lead scored. Tillman, Tillman on the move. No question the early pace, grueling, hard punches by both fighters. You're not going to see any more of that the rest of the way. It'll be one or two big bombs, but not that sustained 
pace. There's a solid right hand. But it's, a, it's an amazing how there are times when your adrenaline gets up. You don't think you can do it anymore. And all of a sudden, bang, you get that energy flow. I, I've seen fighters that look like they can't throw another punch. All of a sudden, the other guy gets a cut eye, and they have a new surge of energy. Very, a lot of this is psychological. There's a good exchange by both fighters. Bert Cooper has lost only once in 12 bouts. Henry Tillman, 10 and 0. Uh, there, was a, there was an occasion where Tillman was able to move Cooper back. Two Cooper, short oh, right hands and by a left Cooper. Hook and another right hand. Tillman dropping his left hand and opening himself to those left hooks from or the right hand rather from uh, Cooper. Final seconds, round eight. Each day, an awful lot of paper lands on your desk. So should the Wall Street Journal. After all, information is in power. Knowing where to find Scheduled for 12, remember, the championship distance for the NABF. A close fight as uh, we see it. Uh, the edge uh, probably going to Cooper because of the two knockdowns in round number two. Tillman has had the better of it as we have scored it over the last several rounds, going back to round four. But a couple were very close, and the judges could well have scored them for Cooper. So uh, we would say the fight's in the balance. Safe. I, I would say so, Tim. Cooper slightly ahead. Uh, Mercer Smith and Tillman's going to use a little psychology. Now it's going to be, who's the better man? Are you the better man? Round nine. Tim Ryan and Joe Clancy live on CBS Sports Sunday. A two game and exciting cruiserweights. Bert Cooper and Henry Tillman. Jeb is very, very effective. He snaps Henry's head back when he lands it. He used to be a bodybuilder in high school, Kirk Cooper. was also a fullback, but he looks like he was both. He, he sure does. He gave up the bodybuilding when he started to box. Another punch south of the border, Tim. The referee was backwards to it. He didn't see the punch. Busier, and I'm just not sure he's got the energy left to be busy. That's right, Tim. It, it, it seems that he's, he's more tired than, the, than we thought he was earlier. He's afraid to let it all hang out because, because if he ever did get really tired with this guy, he'd be in real bad trouble. He's just looking to steal the rounds and win the fight. Cooper right there in front of him. Now, Cooper, if he wants to ensure a win, he's going to have to hitch up those trunks and really win and do a little bit more winging the way he did earlier in the fight. To go in the ninth round. Good combination by Tillman. Well, as I say, he's win these rounds, just edge them out, put the round in the bank. Good combination again, and one counter punch back that scored. Under 30 seconds we go. Cooper, that got Tillman's attention again. Left hook, right hand, Tim. Good combination. Coming to the end of round number nine. Triple protection, Aqua Fresh, a complete toothpaste. Round number ten, live from Atlantic City. Bert Cooper in black. Henry Tillman, the North American champion in gray. His hands full with the challenge of young Bert Cooper. A good solid left by Cooper, but Tillman picks up the pace. Now Cooper backs up the champion again. Well, Tim, his, his punches are much more effective than Henry Tillman's. They both landed good combinations, but Tillman was hurt and Cooper was not hurt. That's why he's able to pursue him.
Clyde Tillman of the year of the challenger. Dangerous territory for Henry Tillman. Cooper content to lie on the ropes there, but he's counterpunching well. Gets over the left hand of Tillman in those close exchanges, Gil. Yes, he does. Well, Joe Frazier was a great infighter, Tim, and some of it is rubbed off on Bert Cooper. Remember, this kid is only 20 years of age. Tim doesn't have that much experience. He's a great prospect if they don't rush him. Tillman looks very, very weary. No snap on his punches at all right now. of his young pro career and the same could be said for Cooper. No question about it, Tim. Have a title on, title at stake and both guys are going for it. Under a minute remaining, we're in round number 10, scheduled for 12, remember, in ABF championship distance. like he got a surge of energy. And he just went back flat-footed again. Right hand by Cooper. Set it up with the left hook to the body, or a little lower than the body. and the punches of Cooper in the latter seconds of round number 10. Men, we're going to look... CBS Sports Sunday, and these final two rounds, the way we view it, will probably decide this title fight. The champion, Henry Tillman, in some difficulty for sure, against young Burt Cooper. Both of them young, although age-wise, Henry Tillman, 25, Cooper, just 20. Each has had less than a dozen fights. Tim, in my view, Tillman is going to have to win these two rounds cleanly to win the fight. Now, Mercer Smith told him to go to the mountaintop. His first title defense, he won it from Bash Ali on April 22nd with a first round knockout. That's probably one of the worst things that could have happened to him. It would have been better if he got eight or nine rounds under his belt. He just got nailed with a good right yeah, hand and shook sharp. up pretty good. With a good, sharp right hand by Cooper. Well, that's the difference, Tim. Tillman has no snap in his punches at all, and Cooper gets your attention every time he hits you. Cooper with 10 KOs in his 11 victories. Tillman with seven in his 10. Oh, big right hand by Cooper. Cooper putting the pressure on. I think he sensed he had Tillman hurt. Tillman looked to his corner. Tillman really has nothing left to nothing to hurt Cooper with at all. Solid left. That one of the Tillman with the left hook and then the right behind it, but the left hook really did the damage. And remember we said how tired Cooper was before, and you get that adrenaline flowing back when you know you've got the guy hurt. You don't think you can do it, and there all of a sudden there comes the energy. Another right hand by Cooper. Get some sneaky leads in. Tillman trying to get those legs under him, but how much is there? We'll be watching closely. He's on the retreat for sure. Timmy's on rubbery legs. Looks like he has no knees. Cooper just following him around. Cooper used up a little of that newfound energy and those solid exchanges he scored earlier. Now he's all right, Tim. And to the 32nd mark, we go in round 11. There's that quick, sneaky left hook by Cooper. Good counterpunch by Tillman. 
Two right hands by the champion. Final seconds. Round number 11. Final round of this NABF cruiserweight fight. Referee Steve Smoker brings these two combatants to the center of the ring. The semi knockdowns were scored by Burt Cooper, the challenger, in round two. Tim, I don't think Henry can win this fight now unless he scores a, at least a two-point round. He's going to have to completely dominate this round, and I don't know if he has the energy to do it. He's in with a guy that can hurt you if he's off balance, falling down, or whatever else. And a discouraging kind of fighter. You land a lot of punches on him, and he just grins back at you. He's not been off his feet. He's not been knocked down as a professional. His only loss, as we told you, to Reggie Gross when he was hit in the eye in the eighth round and was unable to continue. Scored as a knockout by Reggie Gross. But Cooper had the fight one in the card. Well, I'm sure Joe Frazier told Bert Cooper, looks like you have the fight one. You don't have to go out. You don't have to smoke. Not early in the round, anyhow. Actually out jabbing Henry Tillman right now, Tim. Well, the scoring will be done by two judges from New Jersey, Tom Kazmarek and Richard Murray and Paul Smith from Las Vegas on the 10-point system. Tillman still does not have his legs under him, Tim. Rubbery leg. What a right-hand lead into the ear of Cooper, but he just can't move him. Nailed him with a good left hook, Tim. There's that sneaky left hook. Looks like he's off balance, and bam! Very hard guy to fight. Under a minute remaining in the fight. Good solid left by Tillman. Well, the crowd senses that they're going to see a new champion. They're all chanting, Coop, Coop. Well, his territory just down the road. Atlantic City and Philadelphia. Under 30 seconds to go on the fight, a right hand lead landed. Big right hand by Cooper. And he throws him from the most awkward angles. You can't see the punches coming. He knows he hurt Henry again. Coming to the end of this NABF Cruiserweight Championship fight. What a war from the opening bell, and it's all over. So Henry Tillman, in some difficulties, in the hands of the judges. Uh, we would uh, figure Cooper as a new champion. Let's see if the judges agree. Joe Frazier looks like a happy man, hugging his protege, Burt Cooper from Philadelphia. And we'll have the decision from Atlantic City and an interview with our winner when we return after these messages. We are back here now in Atlantic City and awaiting uh, the decision as our ring announcer, Michael Buffer, will get the final tally from the NABF and New York Boxing Commission officials. There is Henry Tillman, a look of some concern on his face, as you might expect, and Burt Cooper with Joe Frazier. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the official scoring. Richard F. Murray scores the bout 114-113. Paul Smith has it 115 to 112, and Tommy Kazmarek has it 115 to 113 for the winner. And new champion, Malkin Cooper. Well, the Philadelphia partisans are giving a well-deserved cheer to the new North American Cruiserweight champion. Get him over here, Bert. Larry. Cooper, the new NABF champion, and uh, Bert, uh, you seemed a little bit surprised that you got the decision. Didn't you think when the fight was over, you'd won? But I put more effort into it, and I had to do it. 
Well, we felt that, uh, that you were ahead on the scorecards, and certainly the knockdowns in round number two right. had to give you a bit of an advantage. Right. Um, I tried to try to keep him down, but he wouldn't stay down. So I just kept, you know, I stayed on him and uh, kept knocking him down. So, you know, see if I can get more points by then. You know. All right, we're gonna we're gonna show those two knockdowns to you. We'll have to get turned around here as we do that. Let's take a look at the first one, Bert, over here. There you go, Joe. Come on in here. There's your first uh, the first knockdown. He was putting some hurt on you, and then all of a sudden, big that big left hook off the ropes. You look you like you like to be there. Yeah, uh, the hook is like my key. You know, Joe teach me, and people say, why you got Joe's style? Because he's my trainer. All and right, said, well, know. that looked like a Joe Frazier left hook. Right. Now, he was still hurt, I think, from that first knockdown, right. and you got him again here. Had to chase him a little, but you caught up with him. Yeah, uh, he, he's a, you know, he didn't show me too much as far as me looking at his tape, but uh, he didn't jab too much. You know, he Bert. tried to, but I stayed on him. You sure did, Bert. Uh, I know uh, as a, a guy who's only had 10 amateur fights, Here's just your 12th professional fight. It's going to take a little while for it to sink in that you're actually North American champion. Really? I'm glad. I pray the good Lord. And I'd like to say something. I'd like to say hi to my son, Rion. Okay. All right, Bert. All right. We wish you the very best of luck in the rest of your uh, pro career. You did a great job. Thank you. And we'll be back here in Atlantic City in just a moment. Thank you. The boy's doing a fine job. Uh, Bertram, let's say, was in shape. And he took everything that Tillman threw at him. He didn't duck nothing. He dropped his hand and came back fine and still put him down. So therefore, he's in shape and he's learning every day. He'll be all right. How long do you think before he'll be a heavyweight in the heavyweight ranks? Well, uh, Bertram is a, is a heavyweight. We, we came down for, let's say, for the championship fight. We know we had to make 195, so we done that. Okay. Congratulations to you, Joe. And that's our show from Atlantic City on CBS Sports Sunday. Like a real accomplished.